Last week, I spoke with two people familiar with the drought in Colorado. I spoke with Madison Anderson, communications coordinator at the Colorado Wheat Committee, about the use in Tessa Albrecht, plant pathology at the Colorado State University on the diseases generated by the dry in Colorado fields. Stay tuned to Connected Farmer. I know when they were planting, the farmers discussed that they were planting into dust and they were really worried about moisture at that point. And then this winter, we didn't get much snow. And then this spring, I, I mean, it feels like summer, but this spring, it's been incredibly hot. Um, I guess it would have been two weeks ago, we got that extreme um, highs in the 90s with a lot of wind. And so that's during our grain fill period, which isn't, it's not great it's not something you want to face in that stage of crop development. So at this time, are they starting harvesting? So in Colorado, I would say we're a few weeks out still. However, um, we have heard some farmers in the southeast portion of Colorado, um, we know for sure one started over the weekend, um, which I was a little shocked by because, you know, usually Kansas gets going about a week or so before we see that area doing it. Um, I think that just shows it's dry um, and the crop's gonna be early with that. Um, but that's really, it. like I said, I think we're still, we've still got a little bit of time in Southeast Colorado. And that's yeah. where Southeast Colorado is taking the worst of the drought conditions. The most of that area is in a D3 drought right now. And how does that compare to other years? So compared to last year, um, I think that area, they had a fair amount of rain last year. I know from January to June, they'd had, and this was in 2019, they'd had around 11 inches of moisture, and which is really good. I mean, in that area, <laughs> there's hit or miss years. Um, but this year, I think they said they've only had roughly like two, if even that, in some areas. So it's very, very dry. Yes, and what's the typical yield there for, for wheat? So it's, um, in Colorado, I think our average yield was around, it was in the 40s last year. Um, it varies from the area of the state. Are you asking like specifically Southeast Colorado or the whole state? The whole state and Southeast Colorado. Okay, yeah, so the whole state, I think last week in the USDA report they had us at, um, I think 37 bushels was our going to be our average. I think last year we were closer to the 40s. Um, you know, Southeast Colorado, they're expecting this year. Um, unfortunately, a lot of their acres have been destroyed. We're hearing, or destroyed and abandoned because they just, nothing was growing. We're hearing about 75% abandonment in Baca County, which is that far, far corner of the state, right on the Oklahoma Panhandle, Kansas border. Um, if they get yields in the 20s, like the low 20s, they're going to be happy this year. Um, I know last year there were a few instances it was getting into the 70s, 80s. We did hear a few farmers hitting the hundreds. I think mm -hmm. that in that portion of the state, they're used to some variability, though. They're used to having one really good year and then like two or three probably not so good years. And what farmers have told you this season? Um, like who or what else have they told us? I'm sorry. Oh, what are their concerns? Okay, so their concerns are definitely abandonment. Um, just not having a crop come up. There was a lot of concerns um, over it, like hadn't really come out of the ground before winter after it planted. So I think their concerns are definitely the abandonment. Are they considering planting another crop, replacing wheat? Um, not that I've heard. Um, not that I have heard because just nothing, they don't think anything can grow. I'm not, I haven't heard anything on that. I'm not a farmer. Um, I work for the Colorado Wheat Administrative Committee. 
Um, uh -huh. so we have, I work, well, we're actually three different groups. We're the administrative committee, which is like the two cent checkoff. Uh -huh. um, every bushel sold in the state. We take that money and use it for marketing, consumer education and research. And then I also work for the Colorado Association of Wheat Growers, which is the political group. Mm -hmm. um, so we have the lobbying aspect of it, as well as the Colorado Wheat Research Foundation, which helps with research and finding varieties at CSU, Colorado State University. Mm -hmm. So we have three different boards and they all consist of farmers. So I spend a lot of time um, working with the farmers, talking to the farmers. Um, and I was out out in Eastern Colorado last week. That's where the majority of our wheat is. And then I'm getting ready to go back out today to go. Um, definitely, uh, the drought is going to affect disease and we have some, had some disease this year. Um, it looks a little different than last year. Uh, last year we had a tremendous amount of water in the spring, which is really unusual, um, for Colorado. So, um, uh, the drought will definitely affect what types of diseases uh, we're affected by. A lot of the um, wheat curl mite transmitted viruses, for example, they're not majorly affected by the dry conditions, but the uh, stress uh, put on the plant, on the host plant due to the drought can affect um, how, uh, how the plant, plant's defense responses um, are how adequate they are to fight off. Uh, what are the common diseases there? Well, the wheat curl mite transmitted viruses, um, the, that's wheat streak mosaic virus, triticum mosaic virus, and high plains wheat mosaic virus. Um, and that's one of our major virus complexes that we see every year in Colorado. I'd say another um, major disease that we worry about in Colorado is stripe rust. Um, and leaf rust. Uh, we haven't had much instance of leaf rust this year, hardly any at all. Uh, we have had some instances of stripe rust, but um, like with the environmental conditions, like with the disease triangle, when the stripe rust arrived, and it was a little bit later this year than it was last year, um, we had very hot and dry conditions in the last couple of weeks. And so even if um, stripe rust arrives, it's not being able to spread because it's so hot and dry and favorable, favorable condition, conditions for stripe rust are um, cool, uh, cool periods with a, a significant moisture, leaf moisture or dew period is required for them to um, make spores and spread the disease. And so I've seen a few instances where we've had stripe rust infection that was initiated and then the, the pathogen just died um, right there on the leaf and wasn't able to sporulate and spread. So that really, um, the drought in a, in a sense can contain um, a pathogen like stripe rust because it just can't uh, live in, in these conditions. Which of those diseases impact more yields? Um, that's a good question. It just depends on the conditions. You know, if we, if we were to get a lot of rain and, and, and uh, some cooler temperatures, then the stripe rust could really take off. And when the stripe rust takes off, it um, has a major impact on yield, um, especially at the end of the season, because when the flag leaves are out, that's um, really how the wheat, um, continues to fill and, and uh, we get nice, uh, good yields. And if uh, the flag leaf gets covered with stripe rust uh, later in the season, then the wheat can't finish and, and fill. So it can have devastating impacts on yield um, if weather conditions are favorable. And right now they're, they're not. Um, another factor, uh, like with the, the wheat curl mite transmitted viruses, um, <clears throat> they can have much uh, higher yield losses if you get fall infection when, when the wheat germinates um, rather than spring infection. And it appears what we had this year was a spring infection. So it didn't start until much later than it did um, last year. So I'm anticipating yield losses to uh, virus complex are going to be lower too. But we have had... Um, 
higher instances of um, aphid transmitted cereal yellow dwarf and barley yellow dwarf this year, which we haven't seen quite as much of, um, and a lot of aphid activity in the, in the wheat field. So that's a virus that, um, or those viruses, normally we don't see major yield losses to those because it's very sporadic and, um, and we don't have, it doesn't cover an entire field, but this year there's been a much higher incident, incidence of those viruses, um, which have a dramatic range of yield impacts, um, de just depending on how heavy the aphid infestation is. Is this drought similar to droughts in other years that the field um, have seen? I, I really can't say. I, I'm watching the drought much more closely this year than I have um, in the past. So I would say Colorado typically has drought. I, I don't know if it's quite this uh, severe, especially in the southwest or southeast corner. Okay. And uh, were you impressed by the diseases compared to other years or is just uh, regular? Um, well, last year um, was a very odd year and, and uh, sort of was my, my first year in the field a lot. Um, so it's definitely different than last year. But as far as like the wheat chromite transmitted viruses, we see those every year. And this year is a little bit less than, than we have seen in the past. Um, and you know, stripe rust is definitely being held back for the for the time being. Um, so, but then the aphid transmitted diseases are much more prevalent. So, um, it's very dynamic. Uh, you know, some diseases are normal and um, or less, and then others are are more prevalent. So, and how big will be the impact on cost to producers? Um, well, for the virus transmit or for the insect or arthropod transmitted viruses, there's nothing, uh, there's not an additional cost because there's no treatment, um, for those. You can treat for aphids, but, um, I don't frequently in Colorado, we don't typically treat, um, with pesticide for the aphids just because it's very sporadic. This year might be a little bit different, so they might um, make different choices as far as the aphids go. Um, but as far as the uh, chromite transmitted viruses, there's no pesticide option. Uh, so once you have it, you have it, and there's nothing you can do about it. So there's no treatment for that. Um, so there shouldn't be an additional cost there. For the time being, stripe rust is being held down, so I don't know how many producers are spraying fungicide. Um, it has been here, but uh, with the weather conditions, you know, we always advise that you have to take that into account as far as cost goes and the market um, and whether or not it balances out and it makes sense to spray fungicide or not. I'm guessing there's probably less uh, fungicide than there has been, but I, I really don't know. Okay. Thank you for the opportunity to talk with you and thank you for your questions. Thank you. <laughs>